everybody, it's Tim Sackett, and you're back with another episode of the video podcast, the world-famous video podcast, Smash Ups, brought to you by the great folks at Fistful of Talent, and of course, our sponsor, Smashfly, the recruitment automation platform that's awesome, CRM technology. Check them out at smashfly.com, and thank you to them for allowing us to do this. So, we usually talk about recruitment marketing, and in a way, we're going to take a little bit of a turn away from that, even though... Here's one of the things, right? I get a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, I want to do this and I want to do that. And we tried this and we failed. And I think that happens a lot in recruitment marketing. There's a ton of failure that happens because we're trying stuff constantly. So I brought in my friend, Lori Rudiman. She's a guest of the video podcast today, video cast, podcast, whatever it might be. And Lori is world famous HR pro, former frumpy HR lady, uh, former punk rock, former cynical girl, now LoriRudiman.com, and also world-aspiring tech entrepreneur at GlitchPath.com, and solving the world's failure. Lori, welcome. Thank you. Currently frumpy as well. Just let's let's be honest here. You know, not lighting the world on fire. No, but yeah. I've seen that badge from the candy factory. That's, that's, <laughs> you're a different Lori Rudiman now. Yeah, yeah, that was frumpy, depressed, Lori Rudiman putting people on pips. Yeah, I'm not that woman anymore. (laughs) Instead, I'm happy, cheerful, broke Lori Rudiman writing checks to developers. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's great. It's really great to be a software So tell us a little bit. So so you know, you know, we've talked about this. I have this thing that I, I, I don't hate failure. I hate people who tell people that it's okay to fail. Because yeah. I don't think it's okay to fail. I grew up with really tough kind of uh, baby boomer parents that said, you know, you should never fail. You should always succeed. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, just succeed. Just just succeed. Don't right. fail. But we fail. And a lot of companies fail. In HR, we fail constantly, especially with big projects. So you had this great idea. Talk to us. Well, thank you. Um, about a year ago, I was feeling pretty depressed after going to HR tech, right? I think a lot of us feel that way. We're like, what are we doing? Why is it, am I is here? it guilt or is it depression or shame? I don't, I don't know. know. It's like an Admiral Stockdale moment. Like I'm on a debate stage. Who am I? Why am I here? What's going on? So I had that moment and I told my friend Chris Ostich about it. And Chris is uh, an entrepreneur in the HR space, but also in a different space right now. He's the co-founder of a company called Listener. And Chris introduced me to the concept of a pre-mortem. And it's really simple. Before you do anything, you ask yourself, how am I about to fail? Not will I fail, not how might I fail, but how am I going to fail? Because we're probably going to fail, right? Yeah, and I I I have have a lot of... Well, and I I think we're all familiar with post-mortem meetings because you go through a big project, you try to launch something onto your company. Clearly, it doesn't... Mm -hmm. Only 30% of the people actually do it. So you have to come back... And they, you know, the executive will go, okay, we're going to do a big postmortem and bring everybody in and say, why did this thing fail? And then we go and fail again. Right. Well, the postmortem is totally useless. Why would any of us, and I've not been divorced, but why would any of us who have been married and divorced ever marry again if a postmortem worked, right? We'd go, no, that's insane. Because second marriages fail at 67%. And what's a third marriage failure? You know this. 73%. I just wrote about yeah, this. Yeah, it's, it's I insane. So, I tell my wife all the time, I'm not getting married because I'm not moving back in with my mom. You can't have that <laughs> you my say this. You say this now, you say it now, but you'd get divorced and you'd be like, oh, that woman's really pretty. I'm going to marry her, right? This is nah, how this plus my mom has a really nice house on the beach. So. It's true. She really is. <laughs> well, all right. So you can you can marry your mom, but most people go and get remarried. <laughs> no thanks. So anyway, post, postmortem does not work, but a pre-mortem, asking yourself how you're going to fail, coming up with a list, will improve your chance of success by over 30%. And it was invented by a management philosopher by the name of Gary Klein. And he's been writing about it for years, but people don't want to talk about failure. They feel like it's going to jinx them. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't want to be negative. Well, guess what? We're all negative and we all fail. And you either prevent yourself on the front end or you are doomed to the cycle of failure like Sisyphus, pushing a rock up a hill only to have it roll back down again. Maybe get a different rock. Like you're gonna fail, but just do it differently. Be more interesting. So, so wanna, that's my I goal. I start with that question, and I'm gonna move down the list of what I yeah. said what I was gonna talk about. But because I think it's really difficult, because you said it. Nobody wants to talk about failure, especially if you're just starting to launch something. You have all this energy, all this positivity, and you know, like you're so, you know, you have to be really be bought in. And all of a sudden, you go, whoa, 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 wait, everybody, let's talk about failure. Like, how do you broach that subject? 
Yeah, well, not easily, which is why the market doesn't exist for my software right now. But I think <laughs> there are a couple of different things you can do. You know, you can use a tool. You don't have to have software. You can talk about a pre-mortem with your team and actually do it, right? Sit your team down and say, just for fun, just because I'm crazy and I'm a Debbie Downer, let's do this. And go through a pre-mortem quietly for 90 seconds, write down how it's going to fail and laugh at the answers, right? You know, but be brave, go first. The second thing you can do is just do a pre-mortem with yourself. You don't need other people's insights because chances are you already know how it's going to fail. And if you do that pre-mortem with yourself, maybe you can become braver or more articulate so that in a moment where it matters, you can say something. That's it, but it's probably gonna fail anyway, right? I mean, that's <laughs> corporate America, that's the global business environment. Stuff fails, you still get a paycheck so great that way right yeah like yeah this, having a real job yeah <laughs> hey everybody level set real quick you're listening to smash ups you're watching smash ups with myself and Lori rudiman you can check her out at uh, laurierudiman.com or glitchpass.com you can check smash fly out at smashfly.com i'm tim sack you can check me at timsackett.com if you want another website fistfulloftalent.com we can just keep going google.com uh, mm -hmm. i don't whatever bing you know. bing some people use bing <laughs> bing I think yeah. I got Bing on my phone for some reason. I have no idea how it got there. Nobody Mistake. wants to use Bing. Come on. No, it's not even a good name. Anyway, all right. So Microsoft won't be investing in my company. But yeah, <laughs> so the pre-mortem. What I have found when doing the pre-mortem with Teams, because anything that can be done on software can be done on paper. So I've done a tremendous amount of workshops with companies just to figure out how they fail, what it looks like, what their comfort level is. They need one person in the room who's really comfortable like me to talk about failure and to be totally nakedly honest yeah. about some shortcoming that I have. And then it makes everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. You talk but a lot right. about opening your kimono and doing all that. Yeah, I don't, I don't use that <laughs> word because that sounds awful. But yeah, we talk a lot about the different ways that people fail. Um, some people are strategic optimists and they can't handle failure cognitively. They just can't process it. Yeah. And some people like me are defensive pessimists. I see the worst case scenario thinking everywhere in my life, right? If it can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Except I'm always worried about nuclear war and zombies and not the thing that's probably going to kill me in the, in the real world. So yeah, I'm a bit of a Debbie Downer. So we talk about that and then we do a postmortem to show how useless it is. And then we do a pre-mortem. And what I hope to be able to do with my software is to create a confidential environment to do a pre-mortem. Yeah. Because I just like engagement surveys, right? You need to have some level of anonymity in order to get honest answers. So yeah. Well, I think there's so many times when you look at a project and you're coming in there and you're all sitting at the table and in your back of your mind, you're like, this thing's going to fail and here's why. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. But you don't want to be that person, right? Because yeah. everybody else is like, yeah, we're going to make it work. Just through sheer muscle and Liars. energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> right. And then it fails. There is a deadline that we can't meet except open enrollment. You yeah. know? <laughs> every year, it's the same stupid mistakes with open enrollment. But every year, we think we're going to beat failure. And there's always that one outlier who doesn't turn in his stuff until it's too late. You've got to go back into the system. And it's really a mess. We make the same seven mistakes in our life personally and professionally over and over again. And what I'd like to do is solve the problem of making those really boring mistakes so we can make new mistakes and we can fail in new and more innovative and disruptive ways. So that's all I'm trying to do. So you talked about those personas that we all have. How, how do people figure out which one they are? Well, I think, you know, it takes a lot of soul searching and also an understanding of the definition of strategic optimist and defensive pessimism. I have that on my website, laurierudeman.com. It's really just about self-identifying and reflecting. And there's nothing bad about being a strategic optimist. If you have a huge number of wrecks to fill in Paducah, Kentucky, for a tough-to-fill position, you want someone in the foxhole who thinks they can get it done, yeah. right? You need that. But you also need someone who's realistic and who sees that it might fail mm -hmm. and can work out some alternative scenarios. So like anything, it's good to have a mix on a team. But yeah, generally people are one or the other. They hate the idea of failure. They don't even see the world that way. Or they always think that everything is about to fail, which is how I see the world. I'm a gem at dinner parties. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know why that champagne glass might kill you? Let me tell you why. I always tell that when I have an <laughs> HR vendor really like, that's just new into the space and they call me. I, I can instantly just to figure out like what I you know you're gonna fail in this many ways don't don't talk to me I'm not the person 
Mm-hmm. And they hate it, right? Because they think you're going to jinx them. No, I'm not. I'm not going to make the same mistakes as Workday. And it's like, you wish you would make the same mistakes yeah. as Workday. You know, Workday is a successful company. Shut up and embrace failure. But don't embrace it and be okay with it. Beat it and fail in new ways. You know, and so that's the whole thing you and I argue about all the time. Well, we're on the same team. Don't fail faster, fail forward, fail better. Beat failure. Beat it. Don't yeah. be so mediocre anymore. So, yeah, that's my that idea, message. the pre-mortem. How, how and I do you think- do it, right, as, so let's, let's just use open enrollment. We talk about open enrollment, right? So we come in. Yeah. We know open right. enrollment's a problem. It is every single year. We come back. We feel like we're failed. So how, what advice would you give that HR team to say, here's how we're going to beat it this time. Yeah, they normally start planning in what, July or August or even sooner than that. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, depending on what kind of HR team you work for. But yeah, so the minute you get your planning meeting together, before you even start to write plans out, before you put pen to paper, talk about how it failed in the past and how it will fail going forward. It's hilarious the answers that come up, right? Because you're seeing things from one way, people see it from a different way, and then start to do almost a Venn diagram. What answers are similar and what answers are different? Because I guarantee someone in the corner has a wildly different perception of why open enrollment failed than you. And it generally happens to be for one of 10 reasons, like budget, communication, scope, politics. You know, there are reasons why and they'll be familiar, but you probably have a blind spot. So start with failure. I know that sounds so counterintuitive, but do it for recruiting projects, right? Or do it for a video podcast. Before I jumped on with you, I asked myself, how will this fail? And I thought, if I say the word right over and over again, it will fail. And here I am going, right? Right, right? Tim? Right? But at least I know I'm self-aware that I'm doing it. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you can do this in front of any task. My husband and I did it while we were thinking about building a home. So we did a pre-mortem. How will it fail? And it turns out I'm not good with money. I knew it. But we had an honest conversation about that. We're not building a home anytime soon because I can't stick to a budget. So you know, that's true. But it works for a wide variety from recruitment to human resources to planning a bachelorette party. Give it a go. Just try it. You don't need software. So how can people get a hold of you? How can they use you? Tell us. Well, don't go on Bing. We already stated that. Um, Please find me at glitchpath.com or, I don't know, Google's fine. Um, You know this, Timmy. I rank pretty high for I hate HR, so go ahead and try that. You know, there are a lot of different ways to find me. But most importantly, um, find me and say something nice. Don't find me and say anything mean because I don't want to hear it. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thanks to glitchpath.com and Lori for coming on. Also, smashfly.com. Check them out there because they, they pay for all of this and let us do it. And uh, Chris Dunn over at Fistful of Talent, uh, he, he thinks I'm good enough to do this, so he lets me do whatever Forget I that want. Guy. So, Forget that. All right. We'll see you all guys next time. See you soon. All right. Bye, Tim.